In this video, I'm going to be providing you a quick and easy way to get rusty Caspa nodes up and running for solo mining. So I was originally planning on putting this video out over the next couple weeks at some point as part of the solo mining series. However, with KRC20 releasing in a couple days or launching on mainnet by Casplex, figured it's a good time to get this put out there. I know some people have been having some issues running their own Caspa nodes. And what I've done is I've taken the rusty Caspa repo and I've uh, dockerized it into a Docker repo for uh, both the Stratum and also the Rusty Caspa implementation. So this is going to be super easy to get up and running. Uh, you do need to have a system with Docker installed. If you're unsure how to do that, check my part one of my series on solo mining. Uh, once you have Docker installed, there's a it's real easy to get this thing up and running. Uh, we're really only going to be looking at a couple commands here. The first thing you want to do is, for me at least, now this one is optional, but I like to run Dozzle. If you're not familiar with Dozzle is, it's basically a web UI that allows you to monitor Docker logs in real time. So I actually already have that one running on the system. Um, but for the purposes of this video, we'll go ahead and remove it and re-add it. I'm going to stop that container. And then we're going to remove it. All right. So to add this container, super simple. All you have to do is do a sudo docker run. We're going to name it dozzle. We're going to do dash d to detach it. We're going to do the volume mapping that you would normally do with portainer. So slash var slash run slash docker dot sock colon slash var slash run slash docker dot sock. We are going to run this on port 8080. And that it's going to be the dozzle. It's going to be quick and easy to get that thing up and running. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to run the uh, Docker image for Rusty Caspa. So we're going to sudo docker run dash d. We're going to run this network as host so that we eliminate latency. If you're unsure of why we're doing that, I'm going to refer you to the part one of the series I did on solo mining to explain why we're doing that. We're going to set to restart always. If I ever crashes, it'll auto restart. We're going to set the log max size to 10 megs. We're just going to name it Caspa. We're going to do a volume mapping. What this is going to do is this is going to persist the data from our local system to the Docker container. So if your username, your logged in isn't pull, make sure you change this part to whatever your username is. It's going to create a dot rusty hyphen Caspa folder and it's going to map that to what is in the container. We're going to go ahead and hit enter. It's going to download the image and start running it. It is a very small image, so it shouldn't take long to start at all. All right. So we've got that up and running, and now it should be basically starting to sync. Now to run the stratum, we're going to do a similar thing. So it's going to be sudo docker run dash d network host, restart always, log of 10 meg max. We're going to call this caspa stratum, and then we're going to uh, use the our repo, which is going to be stratum's column caspa. Go ahead and hit enter. Once again, this is a very small image. Very lightweight. Now at this point, we should be running both the no the Caspa node on Rust and also the Stratum. Uh, the reason we're using Dozzle is this is going to allow us to look at the logs. So if we hop on over to Dozzle, let me give this a refresh here. We can see all three of our containers. So we can see the Dozzle container that's running, uh, and then we can see Caspa. If we pull this, we can see it is currently syncing. And then if we go to the stratum, we can see it's waiting for the node to sync up fully. So at this point, everything is up and running. We just need to wait for the Casper blockchain to sync fully. Uh, and this might take, depending on your system, uh, this may take about an hour or so if, you, if this is your first time running it. So we're just going to let this go. And I'm going to see you guys back when it's fully synced. 
and then we're going to see if we can hook an I one of our Ice River miners up to it. It's been a few hours. The Caspa node is now finally fully synced. So if we take a look at the logs, we can see we are running Rusty Caspa. It is synced up. Our stratum is still connected. It's basically waiting for connections. So we're going to hop on over to this unit. This is an Ice River, uh, K has Zebra Ultra. And we're just going to update the pool information. So this is still mining to like the default uh, hum pool. So we're gonna, just going to change this to the IP address of the system. Okay, it's going to be 78 colon 5557. This is going to be the port number that the stratum is listening on. And this is going to be the default. We never even install the Docker container. This is the port it's going to be listening on. So all we need to do, I'm just going to leave their worker address in there. That's fine. Hit save. If we hop on over to our settings or our log, we can see it immediately connected and subscribed. It authorized and it is starting to hash away. Now, if you've watched my bug in the video and maybe some of my other solo mining videos with the stratums for K heavy hash, they don't accurately report the hash rate. So you're going to see about half of what you're realistically getting, just the way that it does the calculations. So if you have a 200 giga hash unit that is hashing away at 200 giga hash, let's just validate that. Uh, it's still ramping up, so we may need to give it a minute before we actually see our five minute hash rate here. But we can see we do have 195 accepted shares already. So it is hashing away. But this is a 200 giga hash unit. It's going to be reporting uh, around the 100 giga hash pool side. But that is typically, that is completely normal. Don't worry about that. You are still getting the full hash rate. And so this is basically going to just solo mine once a block gets hit. It's going to pay out to whichever wallet you put in here in your wallet uh, worker. That is all there is to setting up the pool. Now, I do recommend when you're doing this that you set the failover pools to be a mining pool that's hosted on a VPS or a really popular pool. You know, maybe something like uh, Caspa pool or maybe even F2 pool just kind of as those failovers so that if you do have network issues, if your server does go down, that your mining doesn't stop it. You're still mining. Maybe you just switch over to pool mining uh, until your node comes back online, and then you can switch back to your node. So just kind of as a fail safe, as a failover solution. So we're going to let this run here for a minute. We're going to make sure our five-minute hash rate gets updated correctly here. Right, it's been hashing away for a couple minutes. We can see our five-minute hash rate here is 211 giga hash. So that is the average that we've been getting. And you can see over poolside, it shows like 110. Again, don't be alarmed by that. Typic it's typical. Everything is hashing away as it should be. We can see we've got over 1,600 accepted shares already. And basically, once that solo block gets hit, our wallet will get a payout.